Okay, guys. Um, just going to go ahead and create another video, hopefully help you guys uh, understand what's going on. Um, I survived the surgery. Uh, there was a lot of pain. It was unpleasant. It still hurts a lot, but I can semi-function again. I can't walk or put any weight on my leg, but, you know, it's a lot of fun. But let's let's focus on you guys because you guys got tests coming up. And I'm going to flip over here to the test review that you guys worked on. And I'll try to make this have be zoomed in pretty good. Okay, just a quick talk. Number one, how many were there initially? If they're talking about the flu viruses, you do the flu equation. It's eight. Ebola, how many did they start in the dish? You take that first value. You can see that right in front of your equation. There's a 15 right there. And that is the initial value. In 12 hours, you plug in a 12 in for X. And you get 61,440. And now this one is different. Uh, number four, assuming the trend continues, how long will it take for the influenza virus to reach 4,000? Okay, so this is the equation for the flu virus. And you got to plug it in until it gives you 4,000 uh, viruses. So what we concluded was if you plugged in between five and six, so they got 5.7 or 5.6. The students put 5.7 this day, I think. It doesn't matter. But if, you, if you're in between five and six and you're close, you're good to go there. So you just plug in the X's until you reach the 4,000 Y values because the Y's are the output. So it's 4,000 equals 8 times 3 to the X. And you plug in numbers until you get really close to 4,000. So if these are, if there are about 20 questions on the test, we have just earned um, 20 points because 5 points each. Let's keep going. Number five, uh, if they go up in value 15% a year, what happens is they're going up. It says go up. So it's one plus the 15%. That's why you get 1.15. It's the one plus the R value. So you get 100% of the value plus 15% more. Hey, honey, I'm creating a video here. Ay, ay, ay. She's doing dishes. Okay, so... You take the initial value of 350000 It goes up 115% per year, and then you plug in the four. And that's how you get this value there. Um, this is an antibiotic, and then, but the body breaks it down after so much time. How much we left? It breaks down 25% each hour. So it loses 25%, so it keeps 75%. So if you start with 600 milligrams, 600... And that is how much it retains, 1 minus the R value. So that's why you have 0.75. And then you plug in the 3 up there. That's the result, 253.13. It says uh, around to the nearest 10, so 0.1 would have been sufficient there. For the half-life equation, there were 7. That means each time it compounds by a half. You get 0.5 there or 1 half, and it's every 2 months. So in six months, you take six divided by two. That's three times it gets one half. So uh, you take your initial value of 300. This is your equation. And then you get 37.5. This one, it doubles every four months. So you have to have four months to get one exponent. So M divided by four. So it takes eight months to compound twice. It takes 12 months to compound three times. So that's why you have this free equation, 40 mites initially, and it's a doubling equation. Scrolling down here, all this is still kind of the same. You have your initial value of 4. They're doubling. All right, so... She's on the phone with her sisters. Okay, your initial value, 0, 4. It's also the y-intercept, so that goes in front. You can see that they're times in by 2, so that's your base is a 2, and that's your equation. Uh, the ratio test is where you take a number divided by the previous, and that's how you also find the base of 2. Here, you take this one divided by the previous. That's how you find this base is 1 fourth. So be real careful on this one. you got to take that one divided by the other one. So it ends up being these big fractions or... Um, you know, just make sure you write it the other way around. So, 4 over 16 and reduce it. 1 over 4 is 1 fourth. The initial value is 16. There it is. 
So it's y equals 16 times the base of one fourth to the x power. All right, let's, whoops, we are almost done. We're through, you know, 10, we're through 50 points on the test at this point. Okay, here's one big equation all about a population model for a town. Okay, and this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, 25 points on your test. The initial value, 48,073, it's the first number in front. What is the rate? Now, the rate is if it's 1 plus R, it's 0.04 extra, and then as a percentage, you multiply by 100 to get 4%. The whole thing, or the base, is called the growth factor. It's 1.04. It's trivial. It's tiny. Just know that growth factor means the entire base and put it down there. It's five points. How many people in five years? Plug in a five and get a number. Uh, does this represent growth or decay? I can't believe this is five points on the test. The base is bigger than one. So obviously this is a growth function. So now we've done 75 of your test points. What is left? Average rate of change. Okay, this, this is the stuff that I was not present for, although we did have a video lesson of me teaching it. This should be super easy if you know slope. The slope equation is uh, the y's over the x's. You can see it right here. One way of looking at the slope equation you have these y's over the x's. You'll notice on the pictures I give you, I have pre-constructed dots. Use those dots, don't use anything else, okay? So the average rate, if the x is between zero and one, you're talking about the x value of zero and the x value of one, it's those two dots. So what they're saying is find the up and down divided by the left and right, that's the slope, that's the answer. So the up and down between those two dots, the up and down is two, that's the y delta. And then the left and right is one. That's the x delta. So two over one is the answer. And you're done. You got five points on your test. Easy peasy. Number 17 is just a little more complicated. You got to use the slope equation. Um, let me hit pause. There you go. There is the slope equation. That's what we were using on these problems. The two y's minus the two x's. And let's look here. They give you the two x values, one and three. So that's why, you see they have the three there and the one there. They have three minus one in the equation, but you have to find the other two y values. So you're gonna plug in one and then plug in three. If we plug in the one, you get seven. So I gotta find the other value. I'm gonna say f of one equals two times three to the one plus one. If you plug it into the equation, if you plug in, excuse me, if you plug in the one right there, you get two times three, which is six plus one is seven. So the other point has a seven, okay? And now we'll find the other one. The other one is three. Okay, so if you plug in the 3, it's 3 to the 3rd, which is 27. You double it, it's 54. You add 1, it's 55. So this is 55. And then what, all we do is we take the y minus the y. That's the top part. So let me back it up. The 55 right here gets subtracted from the 7. right here, that's the answer. So it ends up being 48 over two. Your calculator will do that for you. It ends up being 24. That's, that's your slope. And that ends up giving you the average rate of change between those two points. So let's, let's recap. You have a given X value that gave you one. Can you guys see that in there? Zoom in a little more. They gave you a one for an X value. They gave you a three for an X value. One and three. You plugged in the one, you got seven. You plugged in the three, you got 55. Where'd you plug it in? The original equation here. So now I've got X's and Y's.
Once you've got X's and Y's, that's where you use this slope equation. Plug them in. Make sure they're in the same order. So, for example, the 55, let me try and zoom back out. You'll see that 55 minus 7, 55 was with the 3, and 3 minus 1, so I have them in the same order. And that gives you the rate of change. Do the same strategy for number 18. And then let's go ahead and look at these last couple. I'm going to go to desmos.com to help make it make sense, I hope. First equation was 3 to the x. y equal 3 to the x. See, we got this exponential growth function. If you plug in a 5, just put it in the corner and then minus 2. So what happens is, same equation. So it just moved it. Oh, it didn't move it. There we go. So the blue one, you see the blue one moved left five down two. That's what happens with these things when you do it on the inside. The inside makes that left five, like I've written right here. Let me see if I can slide this down a little lower. There's your left five. You rewrite it as three to the x becomes x plus five, and on the outside it has a minus two, so you take the minus two and put it on the outside as well. Um, same with all of these things. This one means you put a negative on in front. You can't even see it on this one. It'd be a negative in front of the 3 to the x, and it'd be 3 to the negative x. So on 19c, for that example, if you have 3 to the x as your original function, you put a negative in front, and negative inside, it turns it exactly into this. 3 to the x becomes negative 3 to the negative x. And that means you have x-intercept reflection and y-intercept reflection, or y uh, reflection. Why did I say intercept? x reflection, x-axis reflection and y-axis reflection. All right. That is the gist. You just got to do these transformations. You got to rewrite them. Um, the one-third would go in front of the 3 to the x. The plus 7 would be on the outside. In the corner on this one, you'd have a, for 19d, you just put, you see how there's a minus 2 there? It goes in the corner, and on the outside is a minus 5. It goes right there. And that means right 2, down 5. Just memorize those motions, and you'll be good to go. And you can use your notes when you take the test. All right, so... Um, I hope you guys do well, and I hope I can be back soon. Um, hopefully I'll feel good in a little bit. I have a uh, follow-up on Thursday, and um, here's what my knee looks like. It did a number on me. There's all sorts of blood bruising behind there, too. Looks good. Bionic coach. All right. I'll see you guys later. Good luck.